In the last video, I went over the basic theory of logic gates and built a small prototype board that used relays to create the AND and XOR gates. But to make an actual computer, I need to be able to do some math with numbers to compute. Logic gates make that possible because there's a correspondence between logical functions and binary arithmetic. Binary arithmetic works just like the decimal arithmetic we're used to, except we only use the digits 1 and 0. Each column represents larger and larger quantities, and to add numbers together, we proceed from right to left, smallest to largest. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is also 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, but there is no 2 in binary. We have to write 1, 0. So we carry the 1 to the next column, and we write 0 in the sum. Now we have 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1 again. 1 and 1 gives us another 1, 0, so we carry again. Now the sum is 3, which is 1, 1 in binary. We carry the 1 and write another 1 in the sum. Finally, we have 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1. So how do logic gates help us here? Let's write a truth table of our addition operation for one column. We'll call the numbers we're adding a and b, and the outputs will be the potential carry value and the sum that we write below. Adding two zeros yields a sum of zero, and we don't have to carry anything. Adding zero and one, or one and zero, yields a sum of one, and we don't have to carry. Adding two ones gives us one zero. We have to carry the one, and we get a sum of zero. Now, if you remember the last video, you might have noticed that the carry output is exactly the same as the AND gate, and the SUM output is exactly the same as the XOR gate. That means that the prototype AND XOR gate that I made should be able to function as an adder, and in fact it is. It's a 1-bit half adder. Here's the half adder in the form of a logic gate diagram. The A and B inputs are wired to each logic gate in parallel with the A going to the top inputs and B going to the bottom. The results come out the other side. The XOR output is the sum, and the AND output is the carry out. Now this works great for adding two bits and finding out if we need to carry to the next column to the left, but it cannot handle the case of receiving a carry bit from the previous column to the right. To do that, we need to build a full adder, and as you might expect, that requires two half adders. To make a full adder, we need two half adders side by side. The first half adder adds the same two inputs, A and B. The second one will add the sum of that to any carry input. So first, we wire the sum output of the first half adder to the A input of the second half adder. Then we wire the carry input to the B input on the second half adder. The final sum of all three inputs, A, B, and carry in, will be the sum reported by the second half adder. We'll need to carry a bit out if either or both of the half adders output a carry out bit. Now as we know from the last video, the phrase either or both implies that we need an OR gate. The output of that OR gate gives us the final carry out for the adder. We already know that we can build a half adder with just two DPDT relays configured as AND and XOR gates. That means we'll need four relays for the full adder, but that does not include that final OR gate. We could build that out of relays also, but there's a simpler shortcut. If we simply short the two carry out wires together, we'll create a de facto OR gate because if either or both of them output a true signal, that signal will appear at the final carry out output. I like to call this technique a short gate. Get it because the word OR is right in there. Anyway, shorting outputs together like this is a very common way to create OR gates without having to waste extra parts, and that means we can build the entire full adder circuit with just four relays. Here I've got two of my prototype logic gate boards side by side. The A and B inputs of the left-hand board are powered by discrete transistors on the breadboard. The XOR output of that board is wired to the A input on the right-hand board, and that board's B input is fed by another transistor from the breadboard. Controlling everything is a simple Arduino program which will test every possible input state 
of the full adder and read the final results. If there's an error, the Arduino will stop and blink one of the LEDs. Here's what the Arduino program looks like. The test function writes a value for each of the A, B, and carry inputs, waits 100 milliseconds, and then reads the resulting sum and carry outputs. If the results are not what the program expects, the ER stop function is called, which halts the program and blinks the error LED. The main loop simply goes through every possible combination of inputs and calls the test function. With three input bits, there are eight possible states to test. That's great for adding a single pair of bits, but to build a computer I need to be able to add larger numbers with many bits. Let's make an abstraction by hiding all the complexity of the full adder circuit inside this box. The box will have three inputs, A, B, and the carry input, and it'll have two outputs, the sum and the carry out. By duplicating this circuit, and then wiring each carry out to the carry in of the adder to the left, we can start adding more and more digits. This configuration lets us add two four bit numbers with one column of add ins being sent to each adder. By adding more adders to this configuration, we can add binary numbers of any length. This is called a ripple carry binary adder because the carry bits ripple from one adder to the next as the numbers add. It's not the fastest adder circuit, but it's probably the simplest to build, and simplicity counts for a lot when you're working with relays. Here's my PCB design for the 4-bit ripple carry adder. I'm going to build four of these and chain them together to make a 16-bit adder. Each board is divided into four quadrants, one for handling each pair of input bits. Each quadrant has four relays, making up the four required logic gates for the full adder. The input bits for this adder are connected to the first two relays on the right, which form an XOR gate using their right-hand poles and an AND gate using their left-hand poles. The next two relays form the second half adder. The sum from the first XOR gate controls the third relay, and the fourth is activated by the carry out from the previous adder. The second half adder is built the opposite way, forming its gates from left to right. The final carry-outs from the AND gates end up right next to each other on the board, where they're tied together to make an OR gate and sent off to the carry input for the next adder. The final sum from the XOR gate is sent off to the board's output connectors. After I finished the first adder board, I noticed what looked like a pretty serious problem when I was testing the input pins. The first pin on the right is the carry in for the first adder, and it seems to work fine. The next pin is the first bit of the A input, 
It should only cause two relays in the first adder to turn on, but when I test it, six relays are clicking on and off. This is really bad. I'm only expecting these two relays to turn on, and even one of those isn't working. I was worried that I had seriously messed up this board, and immediately went back to the original design to try and figure out what went wrong. That's when I spotted the problem with this vertical trace on the bottom side of the board. What I had meant to do was to add a via and route that trace on the top of the board just like the adjacent ones, but I had forgotten to do that before I sent the board out to be made, and even though the CAD program considers it a separate trace, since it's all on the same layer, when the board was printed, all of those traces were electrically connected. Fortunately, a bit of dremeling and a bit of scraping was all that was needed to break the errant connections. Then a bit of solder and a jumper wire restored the connection to the output pin. After that, the board worked perfectly. to assemble the other three adder boards to make a complete 16-bit adder, which will consist of 64 relays. Testing that will also be a little more complicated, but I'll save that for the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.